Hello and welcome to Disney Movie Investigation. If this is your first time watching, welcome to the show. Each week we take a look at a movie that is featured on Disney+. Plus. So for this week's episode, we are taking a look at the 1998 sci-fi epic Armageddon, starring Ben Affleck and Bruce Willis. And stay tuned for our bonus story as we head over to Disneyland Paris as we take a look at the uh, special effects show Armageddon Le, Le Effects de Special. And if you are enjoying these videos, please do hit that subscribe button. That way you will be notified each time a new video is uploaded. But for now, sit back and enjoy this episode of Disney Movie Investigation. So like I said, today we are covering Armageddon. This movie was released on July 1st, 1998, and it was directed by Michael Bay. It was written by John Jonathan Hansberg and J.J. Abrams. The production company was Touchdown Pictures. The budget for this movie was $140 million, and the box office was $533.7 million. So let's take a look at the cast. So we have Bruce Willis, who plays Harry Stamper, Billy Bob Thornton, who plays Dan Truman, Ben Affleck, who plays A.J. Frost, Liv Tyler, who plays Grace Stamper, Steve Buscemi, who plays Rockhound, Owen Wilson, who plays Oscar Choice, William Fincher, who plays Colonel William Sharp, Michael Clark Duncan, who plays Jetolis Carleen Bear, and Will Patton, who plays Charles Chappie. In terms of the plot, due to a shuttle's unfortunate demise in outer space, NASA becomes aware of a doomsday, doomsday asteroid that is on a collision course with Earth. It seems that the only way to knock it off course is to drill into its surface and detonate a nuclear weapon. But as NASA's underfunded yet resourceful team trains the world's best drillers for the job, the social order of the world begins to break down as information re reaches the public and hysteria results. As high-ranking officials play politics with the effort, the drilling, deep, drilling team faces deep personal issues which may jeopardize humanity's last chance. So I'm just going to share some interesting trivia about this movie. Um, in May 1998, Walt Disney Studios chairman Joe Roth expanded the budget by $3 million to include additional special effects, special effects scenes, and the additional footage was used for the television, television campaign to differentiate the film from the upcoming Deep Impact, which was released on the same year and had a similar premise. NASA actually shows this film to manage as part of its management training program and new managers to, are asked to spot as many errors as possible. So far 168 have been found. Ben Affleck actually tells a story where he asked director Michael Bay would it not be easier to train NASA astronauts to be drillers than to train drillers to be astronauts. Bay basically turned to Affleck and told him to shut up. Uh, Bruce Willis has said that he did not care for the directing style of Michael Bay during this process and has refused to work with him uh, since this project. Um, Steve Buscemi was asked why he did this movie and he said that he wanted a bigger house. Uh, Bill, Billy Bob Thornton uh, also admitted that he did this movie for money, uh, but it has gone to say that it's not that bad. Um, ben Affleck, to go back to him, has kind of disowned the movie and has gone on to make fun of the movie on several other film commentaries that he's done. Uh, the movie was on Roger Ebert's most hated movie list. And um, on a bit more positive no news, the film was nominated for four Academy Awards, Best Sound, Best Visual Effects, Best Original Song for I Don't Want to Miss a Thing by Aerosmith, and Best Sound Effects Editing. Uh, Revel and Monogram also re released two model kits for uh, uh, to help promote the film after the space if two model kits, basically one of the spacecraft and one of the armadillo uh, space vehicles. Um, so would I recommend this movie? Um, I think this movie is enjoyable. Um, it's a, I think it's a great mix of action and comedy. Um, I understand why people don't like it. Um, I think you you have to get through the obvious plot holes and like if you're too fixated on the story, um, which I usually am, so I'm surprised that I'm saying this, um, you're not going to love love the movie because it is it, it is silly. However, if you think of it as just a 90s action movie, I think it's quite enjoyable. Um, I think uh, Bruce Willis does a really good job as the sympathetic hero. 
um, especially the end scene. I'm not going to spoil it, and just in case you haven't seen it, uh, but I think he does a really good job. I also love the B story of Chappie uh, having his kid be proud of him uh, for going into space, so I think it's really good. Overall, I, I would recommend this movie. I think it's an enjoyable watch, as, as long as you just don't take it too seriously, um, especially if you grew up in the 90s, like this was the biggest thing. Um, especially that I don't want to miss a thing Aerosmith video. I remember that playing on repeat like several times. Um, and that was one of the takeaways from this film. Um, so because this is technically a Disney movie, uh, Disney actually created an attraction uh, in Disneyland Paris called Armageddon Les Effects Spéciales. Um, the attraction was located in Walt Disney Studios Park in Disneyland Paris. And the attraction opened on March 16th, 2002. And the show is used to demonstrate special effects with in a room uh, using special effects. Um, so guests would enter Studio 7A or 7B, where a cast member would explain that they were going to play a part as an extra in the shooting of Armageddon. Um, a short film would play showing the history of special effects, along with a message from Michael Clark Duncan. And guests would learn that they were entering Mur, enter Mur from the film, and they would join the Central Computer and Co Colonel Andropov. Um, so basically, they're entering the space station where the, in the movie they um, they go to gas up. Um, so guests enter the station's main deck, and the director calls action, and several scenes ensue. Uh, the windows open, and guests see the arrival of the meteorite. And as the meteorite hits, uh, the station uh, suffers several malfunctions, including lights flickering, gas burning into the cabin, sealy, ceiling treating to collapse and incandescent rocks crossing the room. Um, at one point, the buildup gas causes the wall to be pulled out and letting air escape until a tight door is closed. And then the finale saw the meteor landing on them and a powerful explosion occurs. The director calls cut and closes the show. Uh, the show lasts about 22 minutes. Um, yeah, I've never, I've never been to Disneyland Paris, so I never saw the show. Um, from what I told, it's not great. Um, I just heard that it's just one of those one and done type things. Um, it wasn't, um, that like it's, it's typical, like special effects for those of you that have been to Universal Studios in Orlando, it was very similar to the Twister experience. Um, so very kind of, it shows the special effects, but again, it's not something that you would ride over and over again. Uh, the show did last though until April 1st, 2019, uh, when it closed to make room for the Avengers campus experience. So thank you so much for joining us here on this episode of Disney Movie Investigation. Uh, please leave a comment what you think of the movie Armageddon. I know it has a very controversial, some people hate it, some people love it. Uh, so please, it'd be interesting to leave your comments and see what everyone thinks. Also, if you'd ever been to the show in Disneyland Paris, uh, what did you think of it? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Uh, please, again, feel free to leave those comments. Um, and so for our next episode, we are going to continue to explore the world of the, uh, the world of movies for Disney Star as we take a look at the uh, historical drama The Alamo starring Billy Bob Thornton. Uh, so until next time, I hope you have a magical day and we will see you real soon.